Ready! Hey, hey, hey! What color is this letter? Green! And what color is this letter? White. And this one? Red. So, are you ready? It's a red E. Are you ready? Are you ready? Andy Christensen. Thanks for joining me for developing clown characters. We understand that clown is more than just the look. I mean, you could paint a mannequin, but there's no life in it. It's the character that brings the life and the personality to the clown. And so we're going to talk about that today. I've often said makeup does not make a person a clown any more than putting on a doctor's smock makes a person a brain surgeon. You can dress like it, but that doesn't mean that's what you are. Clown character comes not from the nose, but from the heart, is what Lou Jacobs said. Let me say that again. Clown character comes not from the nose, but from the heart. Now, there's different approaches in how to do this. There's different philosophies of clowning. And you've probably heard different instructors. If you've been around for more than a couple of years, there's different approaches on how to do this. I try to read all of them because all of them have something to say to me that helped me as I develop my clown character. Uh, first of all, we do understand it's a different character, not just a person in makeup. One time a, a gentleman came to me and he was sincere, but he said, Randy, I do <coughs> Randy, I don't know what to do because I do uh, magic shows for kids at birthday parties and they're just not very excited about what I do. So I thought, I know, I'll put on clown makeup and that way I'll just do the same act and maybe that would be more entertaining. And I thought, oh no! <laughs> Now they're going to get to watch, instead of a boring magician, they get to watch a boring clown. <laughs> well, at least he was aware and he was starting to work on it. And I, hopefully we helped him a little bit there. But see, it's about the character and it's about the personality. My friend Dave Boyd says this. <clears throat> he says he believes that clown is 40% makeup, props, and costume 60% personality. I see why he says that. I mean, we use stuff to connect and also to entertain, but, but the character is the higher percentage. I think of it this way, that the moment I walk in a room, 100% of my credibility is based on my image. Do I look good? Do I walk in and they go, oh, look, a clown, this is going to be fun. Or do they, I walk in and they go, oh, eh, ooh, time to leave. Okay, so 100% of my credibility is based on my image the moment I walk in. But the longer I stay in the room, the more that importance fades away and character rises. Okay? Because I have to do something then to catch their attention, keep their attention, and entertain them. Right? 
So this will, here's some of the things I recommend. Let's talk about how do we begin developing clown character. Hey there. Hey there. This is my friend Sydney. This is my friend Randy. <laughs> and one little thing I think about with clowning is I often picture a clown kind of like a puppet. Huh? <laughs> a clown is like a puppet. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because the clown is an extension of my normal self. What do you mean? I mean, uh, I mean that the puppet is an extension of who I really am. Are you sure about that? <laughs> I, I am quite sure about that. Um, so, so I can create characters with a puppet and then I can also portray that character. But instead of me putting a puppet on my hand, instead I put on the nose, I put on the wig, I put on the costume and I become like that living puppet. I think of it that way. That makes sense to me. Second concept is using imitation with exaggeration. Maybe you've seen a character that you're very entertained by. Can you imitate that character and then exaggerate things about it? I'm not saying that you are duplicating. I'm saying you're being inspired by seeing somebody else that you think is funny or think is interesting. Um, a Raggedy Ann doll, a football player, a basketball player, a baseball player, a ballerina. What types of different characters can we think of? A doctor. How many people have you seen that do caring clowning and basically they're dressed like doctors because they're doing an imitation of that, but then they exaggerate things and use clown comedy as that persona. That may be a starting point for you. For many people, clowning becomes an adventure into the unknown. They want to break from normal life, stress of life, and so instead they put on this clown persona and they begin to try something they've never tried before. Sometimes it is inspired because maybe uh, they want to grab hold of some of those things of childhood and bring them back into their life. The wonder, the the simplicity, the 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 simple reasoning, the... The, the funny, silly things that we can enjoy as humans. And so maybe it's an adventure into the unknown like that. It's kind of maybe even we could say driven by wish fulfillment because they wish they could be more like this. They wish they could be happier. They wish they could be sillier. They wish they could have less stress. And so that inspires them to start clowning. So I have a friend that began clowning that way. She had a very tough childhood and she didn't feel very loved and didn't feel very nurtured. And I can tell you that she she became this clown character that was kind of like a grandmother and she'd wear an apron and carry little toys inside of it. And she'd sit on the floor and she especially liked playing with preschoolers. She entertained them and they loved her. But see, she became a persona that wasn't part of her normal life, but she really wanted to be. And I'll tell you what, clowning actually even changed her to make her a more loving kind of person in everyday life. We can push forward and to experience something new that we've never done before when we start clowning. 
being in costume, being in makeup often helps people free their inhibitions. You know, they're behind the nose, that smallest mask. <laughs> they look over past that little, that little stage and look over and peek at the characters. Okay, but so, so the thing is, you can become somebody different than normal. It's usually based in who you are, but you can stretch out beyond once you put on that makeup and that wardrobe. So still, where do we begin? I know sometimes we, we, we're not sure what to do when we get started. Well, don't worry about it. You know what? You don't have to start by yourself because clowns have been around for thousands of years and the principles of clowning that have developed over the centuries still work today. There's a book called Circus and Culture. I really enjoyed that book. I found it years and years ago. And they had a chapter on the role of the clown in the circus. And this really helped me. Let me show this to you. <clears throat> so we have uh, just a little graph here. And we see right down the middle, there's a line that says 100%. That is going to be the epitome of either being cultured or being uncultured. Cultured or uncultured is the epitome, the, the highest percentile rate. In the circus, the author of Circus and Culture said this, there is a character that sits right on this line, and this would be the ringmaster, because he's elegant, and he's sparkly, and he's in charge, and he, he is coordinated and he, he um, gives directions, okay? He is the most cultured. If you're going to meet the queen, you'd want to walk in with this guy, okay? Now, on the other side, we have the uncultured area. And this would be... This would be the real-life hobo. This is the guy that showed up on the site and said, Hey, can I work for a day? Uh, I'll work for food. And this is the guy who had been riding the rails. This is the guy that had the soot all over him from the smokestack of the train engine. And, and uh, he, his clothes probably aren't very nice. And he's, maybe he's not very, very cultured. He might not be educated. Maybe he didn't go to school. Maybe he had to drop out of school. Um, so, so that is who we would put on the polar opposite side of the ringmaster. Now, remember, clowns are exaggerations. And so connected to this guy right here, we have another type of character. Not as sophisticated, but this is where the white-faced clown shows up. This is where the white face is. The white face is much like a ringmaster, but is an exaggeration of that. He's in charge. He knows what to do. He wants to give orders. He has a plan. This shows in his costuming because it's coordinated. It matches. Oftentimes it's, it's uh, uh, well-fitting if we're looking at the European white face uh, type of clown character. It's specific. Okay? Now, on the other side here, we have somebody who's not quite as uncultured, but an exaggeration of this character here, and this would be what we call the Auguste Clown. I'll just put the letter A there. Auguste, A-U-G-U-S-T-E, Auguste Clown. And so he's not quite as uncultured, but still, he doesn't know. He doesn't know the right way to do things. So he's kind of a discoverer. He's trying new things. He doesn't know if they'll go wrong or not. The white-faced clown knows what's right, and he knows what he wants to have happen. The Auguste is more of an experimenter. The Auguste is generally, in this traditional setting, is more playful. Um, he's an experimenter. He's trying new things. He doesn't know what's going to happen. And so this is often the one we think of a, a more like, I guess, childlike in that way. He's an experimenter. Now, I can also tell you this, though. These character types aren't something that are prescribed. I often say these aren't prescriptive, they're descriptive. If you become a white-faced clown, we're not saying, oh, you have to be this way. No, it's not prescriptive, it's descriptive. You find who you are as a clown, 
and you'll find that you probably fit in here or you fit in here or you fit in here. See, they describe really how people are. I can tell you right now, I have three granddaughters. One is only two months old right now, but the other one is almost six and the other one is about three. And I can tell you that the six-year-old has a white face personality. She sits, she colors, she's meticulous. She knows what she wants to have done. If she plays with a younger sister, the older one wants to be in charge. Tell her what to do. There's a right way to do things. No, 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 don't pick up the teacup like that. We're having a tea party and you have to pick it up the proper way. That is my six-year-old granddaughter. And then I have my three-year-old. She's more like an Auguste. That's her personality. She's the one dancing around, spinning around, rolling on the floor, making faces, being goofy. She's the one that as soon as the white face, her sister, starts doing something, she comes in and wants to mess it up. <laughs> white face, Auguste. Those, those traditional types work well. Think about it this way. The white face clown, uh, it's like Bozo. Bozo the clown was not stupid. Bozo the clown was in charge. Bozo would say, okay, everybody line up. We're going to have the grand march, the grand parade. All right, we're going to play a game now. Stand over here. This is what we're going to do when we play the game. The white face gave directions, was an in-charge personality. But then he had others that came alongside of him, like Cookie, who was an agoust. And he would mess things up because he just couldn't get it right. Oftentimes, it's been said, the white face is not funny by themselves. Can you imagine two white faces together? That's not funny. <laughs> Even in real life. The Auguste clown, <clears throat> historically, is credited to Tom Belling to be the first one that created the Auguste type character. He was in a circus in Germany in the 1800s. And um, he was backstage, he wasn't performing. And he started goofing around. He grabbed one of the wigs from one of the showgirls and put it on. He put on an outfit and had it stuff on backwards. And, and then the ringmaster came, comes backstage, sees him, gets angry, chases him. Tom Bellig runs away, not thinking, runs out through the curtain, over the ring curb, trips and falls into the ring. Well, the audience all thought it was part of the show. And so they started laughing and cheering. This was in Berlin, and it's understood that there was a Berlin slang word, August, which meant stupid. <laughs> That's the August character. Now, of course, we do have the hobo clown character, which is a little bit more like the goose. The goose has flesh tone makeup. Think Tom Bellick. He didn't have on makeup and stuff. He, he, he looked like a normal person. White face, of course, is entirely white face. Oftentimes, the white face would be referred to as the doll clown because it looks like a ceramic doll um, that a child could play with. Okay? So, flesh base, flesh base, white base. Now, as time goes on, people have continued to develop their way of performing in these character types. Because I would dare say that now we have not only white face, which would be more of a neat authoritarian white face, we also now have the comedy white face, which would sit here. And, and actually, I think we could probably wrap it all the way around the back and say that the comedy white face <laughs> also fits there. A comedy white, white face is a lot like an Auguste clown. So these are historical, traditional types. And um, sometimes people ask, well, what about this hobo character? Uh, how, how is this portrayed? Well, it depends on the person that's portraying the clown. There are happy hobos. Think of Red Skelton. But then there are some like Weary Willy who just, you probably were never going to get a smile from them. Um, now, I put it this way. I think the hobo is a type of character who still cares. He'll, he'll put patches on his outfit. He'll try to sew it up. He'll try to uh, brush himself off. Then you have the tramp clown. And the tramp clown character is more downtrodden, more ragged. 
has stopped even trying to patch things up. He's just, he's at a different phase in life, okay? He's the eternal survivor, but he might not have a great attitude about it. And of course, then it, we, we uh, spark off into different variations of that, a bag lady type clown with a shopping cart, um, the cleaning woman, kind of like a, a, a Carol Burnett, Carol Burnett performing as, as, a, as a washerwoman, the cleaning lady. Uh, so there's different ways. Find out where, where do you fit? Where, what is your personality type? And maybe you want to uh, step into those character categories that I've just listed as you try your clowning, as you begin, use that as a base. The best way that you can develop your clown character, honestly, is by living it, by experiencing it. And this is what I mean. I believe clown character is, first of all, revealed through struggle, through trial. You have a problem, what thought process do you use to solve that problem? How it, you solve it really reveals your character. Does your character think everything's a joke? Well, that shows by your response. Do you think that everything is serious? Your response shows your character. Most of us are somewhere in between on the scale between serious and comical. But your characters, uh, clown character is revealed as they encounter a problem. So put yourself in situations where you encounter a problem. How would your clown solve it? Okay? Second thing, character is revealed by your sense of humor. What type of character do you enjoy? Don't try to be funny. Be authentic. Be interested in what's happening and allow your character to respond to it. Probably one of my favorite movies of all time is Charlie Chaplin in The Circus. There's homework for you. This week, plan a time and watch Charlie Chaplin in The Circus. If you can't watch the entire movie, you can at least go on YouTube and watch clips of it. But the entire movie, it's an assignment. And you'll see there's a part when Charlie Chaplin is trying to be funny. And he wasn't. Which was hilarious. <laughs> because you could see he was failing so badly at trying to be funny. He just couldn't get funny right. So... So what would make your character chuckle? What do you think, what does your character think is funny? What would make your character sit in a state of wonder and awe? What would make your clown character laugh uncontrollably? What would make your clown character be jealous? What happens when you see a bulldog? slobbering, panting, smiling at you, and it walks towards you. How do you respond as a clown character? It shows your character. It shows your personality. Character is shown through action and reaction. Something happens and you respond. Are you an instigator or are you a responder? That's different. Okay, a fire alarm goes off. What does your character do? A fire alarm goes off. <laughs> do you run around and try to help people? Do you hide underneath the table? <laughs> Maybe you were the one that pulled the fire alarm. <laughs> Why? Why did you pull the fire alarm? See, these reveal things about your character. Do you just slough it off or do you panic? Do you look to save others or, 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 or how does your character do it? You think individually. Clown character determines everything. I often think of it this way. I made up this little schematic. See if you can see it here. There you go. All right. Oftentimes when people start clowning, they, they think about what's funny. They're part of the audience. They start to develop skills. Oh, to be a clown, I'm going to need to juggle. I'm going to need to face paint. I'm going to need to have some props. Okay. And then they also look at image and character. 
They say, oh, I want to look a certain way. And then they start studying the historical art and realize why people did what they did. And through this, they kind of get to this point of clowning where they love doing what they do. It's just, they're not all the way on the outside. They've come through these lanes. They've come through these layers and, and they found clowning in a way that they love it. But I found that after a person clowns a number of years, yes, years, this process inverts itself. You start realizing in my heart, this is what I feel is right for me as a clown character. And then you start saying, oh, look at this in the historical art. Other people did it this way. And actually, it not only gives me permission, but it, it gives me a foundation for me to experiment and do even more. And then from that, that determines how I look as a clown now. And people start changing their makeup. And they start changing their costuming. And now, because I want to portray myself this way, I'm going to learn certain skills that help me show my character and relate to my character. And finally, we reach out and touch our audiences again. So the process kind of inverts itself. So the makeup isn't to hide who you are. It's to help you show your emotions and your expressions and tell people who your character is. The makeup is to do that. It's not to hide who you are. And then, and then it comes to character, right? What kind of hat do I wear to be the character that I want to portray? Because these hats say something very different, don't they? These hats say something to my audience about who my character is. <laughs> Am I a classy guy? Am I goofy? Am I silly? Am I uncoordinated? Right? Am I fun loving? Am I high class? Am I low class? <laughs> the hat tells something to your audience about who you are. Same thing with all the rest of your wardrobe. Would I wear this as a hobo character? Probably not. Maybe instead I'd wear something like this. Each of these Tell my audience something about my character, my personality, how I think, how I feel. And so look at your wardrobe and say, what is it saying to my audience? The props that I use. I carry in a box with my supplies. This tells you something about my character. Is that the kind of box? that your character would you would use something flashy and sparkly or would your character bring in something like this a little more zany a lot more colorful right what kinds of box would you use to carry in your props oftentimes as my whole character I carry in something like this this is what I use to carry in my different props Maybe you don't even want to use a box. Maybe you're using a, a type of a bag or something like this. It tells us something about your character. Do you want to see some tricks? There's some tricks. <laughs> the way you walk helps display your character. How you enter a room helps display who your character is. Uh, the props that I use, Simon the Clown, often comes in carrying a broom and starts cleaning. It's my reason to be in the room. It's my reason to be in the space. I am like the janitor. I'm like the custodian. And I come in to start cleaning things up, which is a little ironic because I'm a mess. <laughs> but I, I would often just borrow a broom from the place where I was performing. But if I can, instead, if I'm traveling there, driving my van, 
then I bring my own broom. Here's Simon's broom. And you can see it says something about my character. Because, yeah, I've messed things up in a colorful way. And, yeah, maybe I've been a little broken. But I'm trying to hold things together. I don't necessarily preach that to people, but it means something to me, and I believe because it means something to me, the audience begins to understand the feel of the character. And I do that with my makeup, my costuming, my props. Let me tell you three things that I would recommend as you can continue to develop your clown character. Here's the first thing. Find a signature piece that you can perform. Find a skit that you can put yourself into. And the more you perform that skit, the more free you will be to express yourself as your own character. As you mold the piece, you'll find the piece will begin to mold you. You'll find freedom to try new things because you understand the routine so well, the skit so well, that you can now do the skit, but also play with your audience and try some new things with your character in it. I say this often, technique is head, but character is heart. So you learn the technique and you're specific with it, but then you begin to play with it and put your heart into it. Choose a signature skit piece that you can perform and it will help you to mold your character. Second thing, find a prop and use it as a bridge to your audience. To me, the broom has been that because I can sweep. I have people hold up their feet and I go to sweep and then I sweep off the bottom of their feet. It gives me an opportunity to interact with an audience because I have a prop I can use. The prop is just an excuse to communicate and build relationship with my audience. Third thing, pick a theme song. Pick a theme song. Is there a song that, that your character relates to? Music that represents your character, that brings out the clown in you. Oftentimes, I'll listen to that kind of music as I'm putting on my makeup, getting ready to go out and do a show. Understand it's not so much about what you're doing, but who you are being as a character. Because the being motivates the doing. Who you are in the inside shows through your actions, through your image, and that's what connects with your audience. Thank you for allowing me some time with you today. I hope some of the things I shared with you will inspire you and help equip you to just continue to grow as a clown. What a wonderful opportunity we have. I know this, I'm a better person today because I chose to do clowning and to become a clown.